Welcome, this is Baron Mac Show. I'm here today with a special guest, my man Stevie Creed. A pleasure, thank you for having me. That's what's up. So, Stevie Creed, tell us a little bit about you. How did you get your name? So my name, it started when I first came to Brooklyn from Scotland, and I was in the studio and people were brainstorming names for me, and then the Brooklyn Scotsman came out, so the Brooklyn Scotsman's kind of what people call me. But then they were saying, you know, I, you know, you believe, you must believe a lot to come out here and what you're doing and stuff. So then Stevie Creed means Stevie believes, uh, or Stevie's beliefs and what you believe in, what you're doing, where you're going. And that's kind of where it all came from, you know, it came from that. And from the first week in, in Brooklyn and East New York, kind of stemmed from there. That's what's up. So, Scotland rapper, how did you get your style and develop it? You know, who did you listen to? Who inspired you? Well, music was always around my family, so like I grew up in Motown music was like the big thing in my household. I was named after Stevie Wonder, so okay. I always had music. And my sister, she was like a big uh, singer and stuff. She was always the performer. So I was writing all the time lyrics and stuff. And then hip hop, I just gravitated towards because of what they were talking about and I could relate to it. But also the, the, the really liberating factor to hip hop was that you didn't need any money. You didn't need any instruments. I didn't need to go to a special school or get tuition. It was like it was all about what you put into it, and it was it was really freeing to me because I didn't have any instruments or anything. Right. So I was just able to do it with no money, and that's what I loved about it. It was just you could express yourself, and you you learn over time and time and sheets and sheets of paper, writing and writing right. and writing how to do it. So that's where it came from, and then studying all the greats, you know, the rappers from uh, all over New York, you know, Tribe Called Quest, Wu Tang, Biggie, Tupac, all the there's so many. Right. Right. Him, you know, all that that's where it came from and uh, as you as you grow older you realize more that it's also about the meaning you have behind your music and why you're doing it so now it's all about what you're trying to say and how you're trying to get that message across and what, right you know. so what's your inspiration in, in doing the music like the songs and I'm glad you mentioned those names that means you've been doing your homework you yeah, know what I'm saying yeah. well what's like the inspiration behind your songs what kind of kind of message you're trying to convey well Everything is about my my times and, and my life I'm going through or I've been through, and a, a large amount of it is my time in Brooklyn because okay. I had a, that's when things really it was like my whole world flipped upside down. I right. was in Scotland doing my thing in this wee place, this wee city, and then you're in East New York, and it's like I was living in a whorehouse at the time, and okay. then all just stuff was going on, and I felt like I was in a video game having to navigate my way through all these things, and I met a lot of great people and overcame certain things and. It was, it's all about the people I've connected with and the things that I've done, so I feel like I have a responsibility to tell that story. Okay. And I feel passionate about it, so that's what the music's about. And actually, my my producer, who's, who's over here just now from Scotland, uh, Sean, he's over there, but he once told me in the studio, he said, you know, if you're recording, I feel like you should record when you have something to say. Right. You know, he doesn't believe in just recording if you have nothing to say, you know. You know, Sean from Scotland and Emmy Perez from Scotland, they, they're out here just now actually, so they've been my team. And then Douglas Adam Ferguson, he's helping me just now as well. It's like the three of us, uh, we're doing that and it's always been the same team. So I've not really, right now actually, there is one beat we're working on with a, a great producer and rapper from Brownsville, Jux. Okay. Uh, uh, so he's uh, doing a beat for the album as well and he's really good and uh, someone from Atlanta as well. So Nice. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of people, people don't see all the things going on behind the scenes, but there's a lot of people helping and uh, they, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. So it's, it's good, I'm lucky, I'm really lucky. That's what's up. Yeah, you're coming from the galaxy, right? Yeah, I yeah. think it was over there, East New York. I heard, I did a little research on your yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. So tell us how you hooked up with um, Bolden. Yeah, uh, well, I had this song, The Galaxy Motel, and we had a chorus and bridge and stuff for it, and a few singers tried it, you know, we tried to do it, but 
I was like, we need that soul. We need that soul sauce <laughs> for it. And I couldn't find anyone. Like, and, and I was back in Scotland. I had to go back to Scotland. And I was like, I'm never going to find this here. And then I think I stumbled upon Garnet's music online. And then I just I searched for ages to try and get a contact. Right. And then I managed to get him and I said, can I call you? I sent him a message saying, could I call you? And I called him from Scotland and just basically tried to persuade him to do the track with me, you know? <laughs> I think he's thinking, what, what the hell is this crazy guy from Scotland? And then, uh, yeah, we agreed to do it and he was so professional. Like, within a few days, he was in the studio, recorded it, it was flawless. And I was so blown away with how professional he was and, and right. harmonies, everything was like, I was like, shit, like, it was so good. And then he laid it down and then we recently met up. Uh, we met up in Atlanta, actually, and we did some radio stuff out there. We're in the nightclubs out there and just That's partied and it was good. And now he's in New York we're doing the show. We've got a show on uh, Saturday and we're doing recordings, working on more music for the album. So I'm very lucky. Again, things are meant to be. Like, I, I, I don't believe in coincidences, but I believe when it's meant to be, it's meant to be and just follow your gut. So right. I've always done that and it's kind of saved me a lot in life. That's what's up. That's what's up. So I, I just got a, maybe a few more questions. You know, like I see your, your videos. You know, um, that traffic lights. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that was really touching, really deep. Yeah. yeah and um, That was shot in my hometown. So that was yeah. shot in your hometown. Yeah. You know, tell us a little bit about that. It was very touching, yeah. you know. Well, that's, uh, you know, it's uh, based on things I've experienced or people have experienced and I've seen in their lives or in my life. And it's sort of a culmination of different things. But I just wanted to talk about, like, how everything's passing by, like traffic life. And you mm. see the continuous cycle. It keeps going on and on and on, whether it's, you know, people that are, you know, caught up in drugs or, you know, the system that they're in, they get trapped. And there's no empathy for these people, I don't think, you know, and people don't really understand what you go through or the reason you, you get into these situations. The other day I just bumped into someone that slept on my floor in a crack den and was homeless for six years. Wow. And he was talking about it. I was homeless for a small period as well. and you're two steps or one step away from being homeless anyone is anyone. one step away that's from true. being homeless or one step away from being addicted to drugs or alcohol and that's something that i feel like people don't really understand unless you've experienced it or being around people right. that have experienced it so it's just delving in more to the people's lives and why they are the way they are and we're all humans at the end of the day we all have emotions so i that's think that's step. what the, the, the story is about and the, the transition from being a kid to seeing it in your family and then growing up and you're continuing the cycle because you don't know anything else and you don't know any way to escape it so what's up man stevie creed I, I you know i'm gonna be following you a lot more man you know what I'm saying i'm gonna be looking for your stuff you know the one thing about the internet you know we anywhere you go you all everybody's in touch yeah yeah you know great, what i'm saying yeah. it's a beautiful thing you know we all connected yeah and music is the universal language so we need that, you know, we get to learn each other's culture, yeah. you know, like how they do things in Scotland opposed to here, you know, we, you know, Brooklyn is rah, rah. Brooklyn stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm very overwhelmed with being accepted here, like, I never thought that would happen and my, my aim when I came, I was actually boxing, I used to box. Right. So I came out here for boxing and my actual, when I think back to being that teenager, my aim was to have one friend in America. Because I never had any family or friends and I was just thinking if I could have one friend that, you know, would like my music or that would I could chill with and then it happened and I remember that feeling of like, shit, I've came from Scotland, I'm in Brooklyn, the, 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 this huge place, New York City, and I have a friend like in this neighborhood where I thought I wouldn't get accepted. That I That's didn't right. Think I would. And the hip hop thing, like obviously you, you know it inside out and it's like just to be accepted on that level is something I'm, I'm craving, I'm craving that and that's why the history is very important to me because without, you know, Grandmaster Flash, Cool Herc and, you know, Rakim, everyone that came up in, you know, Brownsville, there were so many that came from there, Do or Die, bed style, all yeah, that. all but that. It's like, without them, you know, we wouldn't be able to do what we, we do right now and they inspired me but I just never really thought I would be here and even for it to be possible to make music here. Dope, so dope, dope. Maybe one day, like, that's my dream to have people blasting my music in their cars and the the cars, right. and the concrete. <laughs> if they do that in Brooklyn, I'll just die and go to heaven. That's all I want, you know? <laughs> nah, we need you to be around and make more music. That's what, you know what I'm saying? Inspire the next set of people that come along. So yeah. we don't want you to die and go to heaven right now. Oh, well, yeah. You know, you got a lot more work to put in. Going back to the place that helped me is, is important and 
trying to start something there, you know, so. That's what's up. Yo. Yeah, thank good, you so good, much. Yo, good meeting you. Yeah. I'm going to be following you. I like that. The Brooklyn Scotsman. Brooklyn. Yeah. That, that, you know, that, that representation, that, you carry some weight. I know. You can go to any state. They'd be like, you from, you said Brooklyn Scotsman. Like, I know, what, I you know. from Brooklyn or something? Like, I know. It's, it's a lot of responsibility as well, you know? Yeah, that's a sad. That's but a sad. You know, I think going back to Scotland and having that name, I didn't just come here as a tourist and spend a week or two. I stayed here for years back and forth. I lived right. in uh, uh, Linden Boulevard, Pennsylvania Avenue. I lived on the Junction. I lived in uh, all these areas. So it's like I was part of it. I, I wouldn't say I was a journalist. I was a guy that lived in the culture and it, was, it embraced me. So right. that's kind of something I've, I've got a weight on my shoulders to um, tell the world what people did for me. And, that's like, the And try and you know, do something. I don't know, it's, it's weird. It's a weird, it's gone full circle, but you're still trying, you know, you're still trying to do something with it. But, you know, I believe in the people around me and what we're doing. So there's great people out there and the good outweighs the bad always. And that's that's right, don't show, exactly. So. All right, y'all heard it. Stevie Creed, this is the Barry Mac Show. My man right here, you know, we're going to be playing some of his videos, his music. You know, I'm, I'm going to big him up, blow him up all over social media as well, you know. So we're going to follow him as well. That's so, where they can find you, Stevie? Yeah, so it's at Stevie Creed, like anywhere. Just Stevie Creed, the uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify. It's all Stevie Creed, everything. The website, steviecreed.com. So just nice. that. Just Stevie, like Stevie Wonder and Creed, like the boxer. So, you know, That's Stevie Creed. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks Peace again. out. Thank you so much. All right, no problem.